I need to interview in order to leave, okay? This happened today, and in an attempt to keep it short, I'm leaving out some of the details. So I attended a hiring pool to work for the government as a civil servant. When I get there, they explain their unique process to me. Review the positions. Note the positions aren't, weren't posted in advance. Apply an interview on the spot. The hiring manager decides there and then if they will hire you. I took a look at the postings, so I'm not qualified in any of them. Realising this would be a waste of everyone's time, I leave to check out. As I'm checking out, I'm informed that if I want to be considered for another hiring pool, I need to be interviewed at least three times and not be offered a job. Since I paid to be there and waited a year to attend, cue malicious compliance. Hiring manager, how much net experience do you have? Me, none. Hiring manager, do you know C++? Me, no. Hiring manager, tell me about your last project as a SharePoint developer. Me, I'm not a SharePoint developer. Hiring manager, what tools have you used for QA automation? Me, I've never done that. I'm life and wouldn't know where to start. You get the point, I left the event with no job offer and some very frustrated hiring managers. 3D printing at a school, what could go wrong? It's not my story, it's my dad's, I'm on mobile. <sighs> my dad works at a charter school as the IT coordinator a few years ago. The school purchased a 3D printer. It was a plastic printer. Basically it spits out melted plastic and lays it down like bricks. It prints item on what's called a builder plate. A few months in, the technology class has started doing projects with a 3D printer. The first project was designing bowls. When the first class finished and the students turned in their projects to be printed. My dad noticed major flaws with multiple designs. About 13 students left their project at a Z coordinate larger than zero. This meant that the printer would, pr would try to print them in midair. My dad talked to multiple students and most of them told him to just print it. Okay, I'll do that, my dad replied. After over 100 hours of printing, all that the 11 students received was a lump of plastic and an F on the project. My boss doesn't make mistakes. A few years back, I worked in an office that had an egotistical new second in command. He was in charge of scheduling. I walked in one morning to see that one of my co-workers was given an unfair workload and she was stressing over the obligation. I showed her that there was nothing to worry about and I took a fair share of her workload. I finished it off before 8am then started my work schedule. I was pretty quick and could easily help while completing my own assignments. I felt helpful and hoped for my co-worker was a little less stressed about her job when the new arrogant putz walks in and looks at his schedule to see more than half of her work was already done. He asks how this is possible and she tells him that I took a couple of the reports off her and finished them. He is angry and calls me in to ask why. I told him that I thought there must have been a mistake on the schedule and I thought she needed a little help. He chews me out and tells me that he is the boss and he will decide what, who did. <sighs> he is the boss and he will decide who does what and he doesn't make mistakes. The next week he forgot to adjust the work schedule and Mr. scheduled me an extra day off. I said nothing and took the day off. But I had to thwart several phone calls all day begging me to come in. These work boots don't count, well then you can pay for what does count. Quick story, not mine but a friend's. So the company my friend works for provides a yearly stipend of $300 for work related clothing and footwear. A few months back he purchased some protective clothing that would have been covered under the company policy, but decided to just pay for it himself because he wanted to use his stipend for a pair of work boots he had his eye on. Don't know why, that's just what he wanted to do. Anyway, the boots were $200 and 100% classified as work boots like composite toe, extra tough leather, reinforced soles that can handle something crazy like 12,000 volts of electricity for 60 seconds before you get shocked. He gets the boots and sends the receipt into HR. HR responds by telling him these boots won't be carried because for some odd reason the company doesn't consider them work boots. I'm sure you can guess what happened next. He simply with an AOK and a few hours later after he found he, re he receipts for the clothing brought a few months back, he sent those receipts into HR for a two item total of $360. They paid him back the full $300 for the clothing. Today I was at a busy gas station grabbing a few cases of water that were given away for a charity group. All the cases were outside on a pallet display so I went inside, told the cashier I was buying five. 
She rang me up and I walked outside to grab five cases and load them into my van. Small note, I recently pulled my shoulder so I can't lift as much as I normally would. I load one case at a time, going back and forth from the display to my van, into Kaylin a her price black SUV. She starts screaming at me, move your fat ass and honks her horn. I go back and forth four more times but a lot more slowly. She keeps screaming the same phrase. After I was done, I look at her, turn my back to the and start shaking it towards her. Then I yell to her, I move my fat ass. Now what? She sat there opening and closing her mouth like a fish out of water. It was beautiful to see. Too many large bills. I work at a retail store in the Midwest. My boss recently went on maternity leave and we have an interim manager, Jack, helping us out with the administrative side of the business. I'm the assistant manager and I've been at this location for over two years. Yesterday Jack told me I was stocking our drawers incorrectly. We had too many tens and fives and not enough ones. I explained that in this part of the town our cash customers normally carry large bills and to break them appropriately. I just want you to do what I say, knowing that stores carry this many large bills and the customers will just have to deal with it. Okay boss. I stuck them accordingly to his wishes and things go okay for the first two days. Then I have the pleasure of ringing Jack out. He pays for a 23 purchase with a $100 bill. By that time I only had two fives left so I gave him seven. 67 one dollar bills and a shitty tingling that said I told you so. I laughed about it and we changed it back the next day. We should leave each other alone, sure thing. This is fresh from a couple of hours ago. Friends and I were on a trip, kids included. There were six families including one I don't know. Friend of friend, absolutely no problem. I called her mum Lady Snowflake because that's how much I appreciate her. Anyway, midway during our trip, I actually dropped a bag of toys. My child was asleep on my back and I was quite clumsy picking up. Some friends who weren't busy dealing with kids helped pick up while the ball rolled to Lady Snowflake's feet. Mitchell said, hey, name, can you please kick that back? She knows I don't mind it and kicking it back was the easiest way anyways. Lady Snowflake literally replied, I don't know her, so I think we should leave each other alone. And that was it. Mitchell friend much for fuck's sake and fetched the ball for me. Later we were at the lakeside and I had a nice hammock set up. Later the kids got tired of getting thrown tantrums. She tried getting them into the shoulder without so smiling while I was trying on the hammock enjoying her berries. Mitchell friend came to me and said Lisa wanted to ask if she and her kids could borrow a hammock for a while. I could hear one of them screams, I want it, I want it. I said she wanted us to leave each other and I will respect that. Then I joined my kids and I had a nice iced tea. You can't change modules, not on my watch. Okay then. So to anyone who is in the UK, you have, might have heard about Open University. I began studying my Certificate of Higher Education in Health Sciences with the OU to be able to process some traditional uni as I started to go to uni from the time. I went to college, my mum was a pain in the arse about doing it after for a while, mainly about the fact that I was not studying enough despite studying whenever and wherever I could. The module I started introduced childhood studies and child psychology wasn't interesting to me and the policy weeks were just a bit of a pain in the backside. So I wanted to change my jewels. When I went to my mum and said that I wanted to change my jewels, she went, you will not change it, not under my watch. She did, she did say not under my watch, so when I went to Edinburgh for a day out, I called the AU and asked to be switched over to Health Science module, and I switched from it to the Health Science module that day. I told my mum when I got home, she was, I told you not to change my jewels. I answered her with, you said not under my watch, so I did it while I was away from you so that you had no say in it, and walked away. Months later, she knew that I did. She my grades that she was treating me like I was still in high school. That my grades were a whole lot better and I was interested in investing in the module. Yes, I did go on to brick and mortar uni and I'm loving it.